This is Mike Zapsick from AMC's Comic Book Men and the Ming and Mike Show and I Sell Comics Podcasts. And you are listening to Talking Codswallop. I never said record. <laughs> anyway, so recording. Should I start counting? One, two, seven. <laughs> Ninety-six. Four. Yeah. <laughs> 480. <laughs> I just didn't want to be left out. Oh, yeah. well, of course. Did you want to say that magical sentence again? I don't want to stress Walt out. Oh, yeah, that's understandable. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'll send you that clip so you can um, use it. <laughs> you can just press it on speed dial. <laughs> I say it every day so I can probably record myself saying it. You probably can. Yeah, you've got the technology, definitely. I do. You know that when you open the door, you can normally get the little alarm in the shop to let you know the door's open. You should just have yeah. that as a sound clip every time someone opens and closes that door. <gasps> yes. I, I just, yeah, I hear that in my sleep. I bet you yeah. do. Yeah. I Oh, oh my god i think anybody who listens to tell him steve dave can uh he- hears that in their sleep after a while well it's not as much now but back in the day it's like the smell at the monkey house you get used to it yeah. when you're you're doing it every week yeah yeah so yes. <laughs> first time i came into the stash and i heard that noise for the first time i was like oh that's what it is <laughs> wow i have context now that's pretty cool yeah. oh my god <laughs> <laughs> random sound from the stash <laughs> nice <laughs> okay, so welcome to this week's Talking Codswallop. I am Gemma. I'm not James. I'm Andy. <laughs> You're Andy. And James isn't from the north, uh, from the south. Oh, no. no. And uh, yeah, James unfortunately can't be here today because he's really not very well. But we have got a wonderful replacement for him. And this man is the legend that is Michael Zapsic. Oh, you guys are too sweet. <laughs> well, I mean, I said it. <laughs> I'm Michael. How are you? And, and if you hear that in the background, that's the uh, the Tell Him Steve Dave sound effect, the very, very special sound effect. Coming live from the secret stash at the moment, aren't we? Yes, we are. Well, you guys are, you're out of work right now, correct? Correct, yes. Yeah. What time is it over in England? 20 past eight. Yeah. 20 past eight. So here, here is 3 p.m. Oh, we got the noise. <laughs> it's 20 past three here. So it's like time travel, folks. It's so cool. You're coming to you're coming to us from the past, and we're coming to you from the future. Yes. Yeah. How does it look up there? Yeah. The future look. A bit wet. Gray and wet. <laughs> <laughs> it will anarchy reign. Is that what it is? Oh. <laughs> I'm looking at the people coming in the door, and it's mostly the people who it's it's off. And they're gonna. If you hear people asking questions, you'll know why. Yeah. But the obnoxious brigade. <laughs> they can hear you, Ray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you need a sign that says "shh" indoor voice. <laughs> uh, well, uh, yeah, we do. I actually need a T-shirt that says that. Frank Number Five and I are working on that right now. <laughs> Just one that says, sh- oh, "I assume I'm not on loudspeaker." <laughs> before i say this because i can hear a little voice <laughs> and actually i want to get one that says if the cameras aren't rolling i don't have to be nice to you <laughs> i was gonna say yeah shut the fuck up was what i was gonna say but <laughs> yeah i remember we had we are a, a working comic store with with kids in there Gemma. yes that's why i said have i got have you got earbuds in at the moment <laughs> I do. Yes. Yeah, okay, cool. Because <laughs> I could hear the little one's voice and I didn't want to swear in front of the little one. And also, you know. Of course you didn't. No, I'm a very good person. So how's the summer been for you then? Uh, it's lovely. It's It's been lovely. You, uh, you could just This is your first summer back at the house now, isn't it? Yes, it is, actually. Thank you for, for mentioning that. Yeah, yeah. we were uh, displaced for a very long time. So, yeah. but last year we were even closer to the the water. 
Um, we were down in Keensburg, which you folks have absolutely no, um, again, context is everything, but over here in the States, um, what is like the worst place in England, like a short town that there's like a murder every seven minutes? Boscombe is a place near me. I'm sorry, Bos- Boskin? Boscombe. Well, Boscombe. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like Boston. Okay, close. <laughs> close. So, um, yeah, it's it's a town near me, and it's exactly how you just described it. So, uh, Keensburg is we we call it the um, the Redneck Riviera. Oh, because yeah, <laughs> it's not good. It really isn't. The week before we moved in, my my brother actually had a house down there that he was willing to uh, to rent out to us while we were doing the renovations, and it was great for us because, I mean. Keensburg is not the best town in the world, but it was great for us because I, I could bring my, my menagerie. We had, uh, three cats and two dogs. Wow. And we were going to have to split them up. And it actually, it would have broken my heart because, I mean, they're family. I, yeah. I don't care what anybody says. Animals are family. Absolutely. And oh, if yeah. anybody want, anybody wants to fight me on that, come bring it on. Yeah. Um, cause, you know, Animals don't live very long, and it breaks your heart when they die. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. and let's face it, animals are usually much better than humans as well. So, oh my, thank you for saying that. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Actually, it was so weird. The week before we moved in, there was a murder. Oh wow! Well, not oh wow. That's that's the wrong term, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> not like you're excited, like wow. Yeah, yeah. it's like it's like a murder. A murder. Yeah, <laughs> there was a murder, and it was like three blocks away from where we were going to move in. Oh god! It was in this. Um, apartment building and even even walt's wife was like you know the, the girls have to be <laughs> girls have to be home they got a cute curfew now i was like oh wow like, yeah yeesh do they live quite far away from um that area Kingsburg? yeah they live uh, a couple of miles away from Kingsburg, but yes it's it's cl- i mean I'm, <laughs> what's your your murder ratio you know, where, where do you feel comfortable? Like, all right, yeah. here's the boundaries. Uh, yeah, I, if it's within like 20 miles, I'm not terribly comfortable with the murder happening. No. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we think in streets. <laughs> if it happens two miles away, yeah, that's fine. You know, a couple of streets down the road. Hmm, this area oh, is getting a little bit ropey. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's your line in the sand, Andy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so. I pretty much got the same as well. But then I've, I'm from a town that is, is really crazy actually because we've got three prisons and also like a, uh, a break, not a breakout house. Um, what, what is it when they come out? Of- halfway house. Halfway house. Thank you. Yeah. They've got a halfway, a couple of halfway houses in my town as well. And it's like, it's just such a, dump <laughs> so you know it's kind of like we just walk around sort of thinking oh are you an ex-con are you an ex-con <laughs> so the odds are in their favor yeah may the odds be ever in their favor so that's great yeah so you live in the actual hunger games very nice Gemma. <laughs> yeah indeed <laughs> it's very nice and i used to work near um one of our secure mental facilities it's called uh, broadmoor I read like, about that in, uh, I think, Captain Britain. Yeah, it's 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 where all our true psychopaths go. Yeah. Every Thursday they would run a little alarms test. Um, so you know, eleven o'clock, the alarm would go off on a Thursday, and you, you okay, that's fine, it's just a test. You panicked when you heard it at any other time than Thursday, eleven o'clock, and there were a couple of false alarms, <laughs> and it was bloody scary. Wow! Talk about Pavlov's dog. Uh, yeah. We're looking to see the airplanes coming in to land in and out of Heathrow because it was, you know, you could see the, the flight path. But when that alarm went off, you were looking for the police helicopters, right? How far away are they? Yeah. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you got the SAS, which are yeah. ar- arguably the the world's most dangerous people. Yeah. yeah. You know? well, even even um, Navy SEALs and Spetsnaz are, uh, you know, have that respect. So. So, yeah. so scary being on the 13th floor. You had visions of those Hollywood movies having to crawl through air, air ventilation shafts to get away from the psychopath. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are, are there different rules for uh, podcasts in in um, the UK? Because 
And I would have just said Die Hard. <laughs> yeah, gen- yeah gen- me going into generic movie plot line. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't want to do that. I want to get specific. Come on. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, well, Andy's not a big movie buff anyway, so he probably, yeah, <laughs> he probably wouldn't have. Wait, been. I heard about this movie where a guy was going through the air ducts. Yeah, that's it. And something about gaffer tape and some guns and yippee. Coyote, a something, <laughs> yeah. coyote. and walking the dead. <laughs> walking the dead, yeah. Just don't give me spoilers. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Hold on. I've <laughs> I've got uh, stuff going on here. No problem at all. Sorry, having Uber issues. Uh, oh dear. Well, at least you got it, Uber. I haven't got it where I live. No, no, I'm. It's the actual the German like superiority issues. No, yeah. you know, <laughs> not not the actual like taxi service. We're yeah. just we we feel like we're superior. No, I'm kidding. It's it's the taxi service. Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> I couldn't make jokes because with oh my god. With all these shootings and the white supremacists and everybody going nuts over here. I was actually going to talk about that, actually, because obviously you've had the two um, incidences. So there was one in Texas, and I've forgotten where the other one was. And It was in uh, Ohio. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, yeah, that was kind of in my mind, um, but I wasn't sure if I got that wrong or not. But yeah, I, it, well, obviously that was, you know, terrible, terrible thing that's happened you know yet again uh, we've got our knife crime over here you guys have obviously got gun crime and stuff but i was actually just interested if you didn't mind getting into it it's like it was obviously you're a gun owner how'd that get out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you may have just spoken about it once or twice on an, um a podcast yeah. that i listened to <laughs> so that could either be i sell comics or mike and ming a pbr because i think you threatened to take dennis to the gun range on a pbr I, episode i think we did and uh also um tell them steve there because uh brian and i talk about it all the time yeah mm. you know because obviously with regards to you know you've got all the gun crime and stuff like that in my head i think to myself well wouldn't it just be easier if you just got rid of all guns and then you wouldn't have that issue but i just wondered what your kind of viewpoint was because obviously i understand you use it safely yes well it's your fault actually it's uh you know oh, is it king george uh, oh i yeah. thought you meant just mine <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, actually, I, I tend to deflect and say technically it was the French mud- mudding the waters because they had beef with us, so they thought they'd piss off our colonies. And yeah, um, and let's, let's talk about the Hessians too. So it's yeah. the Germans, the English, and yeah. the French. I'll be completely honest. The reason why I got a gun is I saw some real ugliness during Sandy. You know, we mm. getting back to, you know, you know, why I was out of my house. We had people looting. Um, and not just people, but people I knew from oh, up God. the street uh, were looting from us. We had nothing for them to take, but they took it anyway. Yeah. And I had a dog who, thank God, these guys were afraid of my dog. But there was, I mean, they were both physically larger than me and they could have like beaten the shit out of yeah. and taken what they wanted. And there's nothing worse than like having that feeling of emasculation. Yeah. So, and, and it's not even, it wasn't even that. It was just like, if I can't defend my family and I can't call, I can't depend on the, the authorities to do that, I need to step up my game. Yeah. So, you know, what do you do? You, you get into shape and you're like, all right, now I can, now I can punch this guy in the head. But by the same token, I also need something that'll take down somebody who, you know, if somebody needs something from me and they ask, I'm more than happy to help out. Absolutely. If somebody tries to take yeah. and someone tries to hurt my family, then I need something that will take them down and not just warn them off, but make sure that they don't come back. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's, that's what it was. There are, there are situations over here that that's going to happen. You know, I'm sure that there are situations uh, in the UK where that will happen as well. Oh, yeah all the time yeah and that's what i can't really sort of fathom because on the scale what happened your experiences of sandy i just i can't comprehend that lack of community mindedness gotcha well 90 percent of the people were like banded together and, and we did we helped each other i looked out for my neighbors i i was looking out on like i have uh neighbors on both sides of me right behind me and across the street from me and I was looking out for, you know, all of the people right around me. 
these guys are like three blocks away and they come in yeah. and um it's it, it, it was really funny because one of them was the ex-husband of a friend of my wife's and you know he has since moved and good riddance but you know it's like wow it doesn't really sort of hold faith that if those dystopian movies ever come true and those TV shows like um, the, Walk- the Walking Dead, <laughs> 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 you know, you can't, you know, you, you know, it's yeah, you know, when they depict the roving bands of of people, that's what it's like. It's kill or be killed, and that is it's horrible that we are having to do that because you know we wouldn't necessarily have the gun issue, but if something majorly kicked off. You would get all the scum flowing to the top and picking over the bones. Yeah, you know, exactly. And that's people part of talk the about the London um, Blitz wartime spirit. It's a bit of a fallacy because a lot of the time, the police were trying to get the looters away from the, the bombed out buildings than the community, you know, keeping the community away from helping. You know, it's yeah, yeah it's a bit of a it's a false story that they speak. You know, there was a, that big community spirit, but there's a hell of a lot of crime. Mm-mm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing that's uh, it. It is kind of heartbreaking when you're thinking about it. You know, it's like, oh my god, really? Yeah. Instead of banding together, which is what we should be doing. Uh, yeah. was, hey, let me get mine. You know, it's like, what? Really? Yeah. yeah. yeah that self entitlement is a horrible, horrible trait that we've never been able to share. <laughs> I know it's that's the thing that sucks, Andy. And that's another thing about the these uh, shootings. It's you know you do see these these people who well we all. Over here, it's it's like that running joke on Facebook, like thoughts and prayers time, people. It's yeah. like it costs you nothing to say that, and it's such an empty platitude. Yeah, I, we're not trying to do that. We're trying to get, you know, um, common sense gun laws may not help, and all these these you know um, shootings, but it, it's a start. You know, let's let's start where we can. It's baby you know? steps, and yeah. and, and that's what. Both sides of the argument of, you know, either doing nothing or making change, they expect that lightning in a bottle, everything will change the next day. It's it's a 50-year, 100-year program right. to get them out of circulation. That's the, that's the first aim, is to, to slowly take assault weapons out of circulation. How about them. quickly taking them out, Andy? How about just getting them out because we don't really need them? Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, no, that, you're right. It's, it's getting society on board. You've got, that's the thing. You've got to move at a pace that the majority, because if you do whip them out, uh, you'll have you'll drive sorry. it underground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That just goes back to our conversation. I, ha- wasn't it? I had a, yeah, that, that's table. what she said <laughs> moment yeah. there. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, you just drive it underground, and that defeats the purpose. You'll you'll just you know you'll the, the black market will be bigger. The black market would never go away, and it's just you know what you got to do is just get society. To, you know, because I know in in America, you know, we could use seatbelts and smoking over here. You know, it's very hard now to see people not wearing seatbelts. Yeah, and I think in in other societies. Wearing a seatbelt is like, no, this is my freedom, my personal choice not to wear one. You know, you can't make me wear one. But now it's, it's seen, you know, like drink driving, it's such an antisocial thing to do. But that's taken decades to get to that point. And you need to do that with the gun approach because you'd love to end it tomorrow, but it ain't going to happen. We had the same thing with uh, motorcycles and helmets and Gary Busey yeah. was like the biggest. Uh, he's like, you're taking away my freedom. And then he gets into this accident and gets even more brain damage. So you're like, wow, okay. Yeah. Well, there's your poster boy, folks. <laughs> yeah. well, it's, and also, oh, to a certain extent... Oh, sorry. Sorry, was, Gemma. Yeah, just one last thing. Go on. You can say this and then, yeah. No, because I was just, I was just thinking... Then I'll shut up. <laughs> no, no, no. It was fine. I was just I was thinking, Mike's only got 40 minutes and we've used 20 minutes talking about guns. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'd like to get onto something a bit more fun. <laughs> I'm a huge proponent of, uh, like common sense gun laws. I think that, you, should, you know, it's a no brainer. Yeah. I think Hollywood's got a big part to play. Not just Hollywood, but also the TV studios. No. I mean, we do get a lot of an American content and we probably only see 40% of what is shown. See. But pretty much most of the adult programs, you quite easily pull out a gun to solve a situation, which is something you probably don't see as much on. European TV, um, yeah, you might see it in European TV. 
because like the police carry guns. So that kind of, in some ways, and I'm not saying you making that comment, but that kind of frustrates me, that kind of mindset in a way, because it's like, you know, back in, back in the day when heavy metal, I mean, heavy metal is a big thing now anyway, but you know, like people used to say that my child has killed himself because he listened to Marilyn Manson or whoever, no, you know, and it's not from that perspective. It's more from the smoking perspective. If you look at smoking on TV, there is a correlation between the reduction of smoking with targeted le- legislation has driven down the rates of smoking to make it antisocial enough that you get the stink eye every time you put a cigarette into your mouth. Mm. It's more from that perspective, not because I'm, I'm the same mentor as you and everyone else. You, know, you Video games and heavy metal is not a gateway drug into violence. No. You know, I think you're absolutely right. And there was a lady, um, a, a lawmaker who... Uh, her district's 20 miles outside of or 20 or 30 miles outside of uh, Dayton who claimed that, you know, it's, it's the, the homosexual, uh, the, all them homosexuals out there are making you know, these things go on and the video games. And it's like, really, that's what you're going to blame. You're going to deflect from something else. How much are you getting from the NRA to say that? Yeah. You know, it's just, it's ridiculous. And it's, you know what it is? How about we have personal responsibility? Mm. How about the guy who went out and shot all these people and he died. He, he was killed within a minute of him opening fire. I'm, I'm sorry. I, and I think I should be a little bit more, I don't know, cognizant of my role in, in the world, which is probably, you know, less than a lot of people's. But my thought is you've got somebody who is willing to do that to other people. Good rinse to bad rubbish. Mm. You know, I is did someone love him? I'm sure someone did. He was somebody's uh, son sometime, mm. or, or he might have been somebody's brother. But you know what? He also robbed a lot of people of a lot of loved ones, so he can go screw. Yeah, yeah. But you wonder whether sort of um, social intervention would ever work in some of these cases because sometimes it just needs the right people and the right welfare to step in and bring that person off the path. Some people just cannot be saved. That's true. You're absolutely right. Some people, you know, there's there's a saying in Alcoholics Anonymous, some people have to die so others can live, and it really sucks. But, yeah, you got these people who, you know, ugh, it's it's just so wrong. It's a multi-threaded issue that cannot, there's no silver bullet. And pe- the, the sooner people realize that, that it's, there are a lot of cultural and political changes that need to happen. That's true. That's very true. And it takes someone with a, a man about it. It needs someone with big kahunas to stand up and say, I don't care what y'all think, this is happening. And then start to push that through. And it becomes a, a non-partisan issue. It's like, whether you like it or not, you've elected us to do a job. You can't be trusted to make your own decisions. This decision is being made for you. We do it all the time and you don't make a big fuss. We don't need a militia. We've got an armed force. If we do want to take over the country, there ain't fucking nothing you guys can do with your AR-15s with your bump stops. Exactly. You got to sleep sometime, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so let's get on with it, chaps and chapesses. Yeah. Let's change the subject now to something a little bit happier. <laughs> Cause yeah. uh, I didn't mean for that to go on. Let's <laughs> yeah. try to put my soapbox away. That's okay, Andy. I'm just going to go and um, I'm, I'm going to, Fashion myself a noose right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was thinking like the whole time thinking, do you know what? You know, we've got this golden opportunity to speak to Mike Zapsick, you know, what should we talk to him about? Oh guns <laughs> and politics. <laughs> Gemma, mention this. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, welcome to the show, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> So how many minutes in, Jim? <laughs> yeah, 26. <laughs> so like, the... I'm going to cut this out. <laughs> no, no, we're not going to cut that out. No, because it's impo- like, it was important what both of you were saying and obviously the stuff that I was interjecting. Everything, you know, was relevant. You know, it's important to say and stuff. But I just want to be lighthearted and fun now. I'm the girl that doesn't watch the news because I don't want to hear about it. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I do envy you sometimes with your ability to stick your fingers in your ears and go, la, 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 la. I, I want that. It's just being naive. Nothing, nothing really ever bad happens to a naive person until it's too That's late. What doing. I like, I like the way you're thinking. That's it. Drama follows drama seekers. Yeah, exactly. So if you just go around with your head in the clouds, going da 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 da, everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 
I like your attitude there, Mary Poppins. It's good. <laughs> well, shall I kick off the lightheartedness with a listener question? Absolutely. Go to town. Go on then. Jim? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> there were no questions for Mike. Yeah. This week. Say, oh. Well, we never put a post out, but I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I, I asked uh, my my best friend and ex flatmate because uh, he's the one who got me into comic book men. Oh, cool. So, yeah. So uh, his question was just about uh, comic book men, really. His uh, he, he wanted to know what was the the most exciting thing and the most disappointing thing that you've seen come across your your desk when asked to to look at a customer's collection. Oh, uh, most exciting thing was probably. Uh, I, we had a detective, um, um, first, first appearance of Robin, detective 38. Oh, okay. Cool. Very cool. Uh, not in the best condition, but it was still very cool piece of history. Oh yeah. And the most disappointing was, uh, I don't know, Rob Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> I have questions about him. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, that's a chapter that's, uh, I'm closing the, the door on it. Yeah. I'm actually closing the door right here. I'm, I, don't even mention his name on my podcast. So if, if you have one question, you may ask it. But it's this is the last time I'm ever going to answer a question about that man. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. No, to be honest, yeah, I was get, I was only kind of joking around about that because I, oh, okay. I figured you probably wouldn't want to anyway. Um, I was sort of interested as to you know like if any any new developments had happened between the two of you or anything like that. But oh, no, not at all. Okay, he's, that's good. He's not a lot around here, and uh, yeah, I'm I haven't you know I've I've seen him at um, like flea markets and stuff, and I just ignore him. Yeah. It's so I'm just like nah. I think sometimes it's the best way to be, isn't it? Because like if the two of you don't get along what is the point in trying to be you know almost like trying to speak to one another or whatever it's no point just just turn around and walk the other way (laughs) life's too short man yeah (laughs) of course yeah yeah there's just a bonus follow-up question from me on matt's question has there anything that you've you've when you've heard it's coming in gone (gasps) excellent and then just done a 180 and gone that was shit and then the same the other way around, something, oh, really? Do I have to see it? And yes. Loved it. I can actually tell you um, there was one thing that I was really excited to see come in. It was uh, the ROM. Do you remember ROM? Uh, yeah. It was it was an old, they made a, a Marvel comic out of it, but it was an old action figure, and it wasn't terribly articulated. It was essentially a block of gray plastic. Okay. <laughs> It didn't look like anything. <laughs> and it didn't look like a superhero. It didn't look like a man. It didn't look like a woman. It just looked like a blob. Yeah, not even when you squinted. Yeah, you're, you're like it doesn't. It doesn't even look like a real robot. <laughs> it's like um, I know you don't drink anymore, but if you'd have been drunk, would you have seen a woman? <laughs> no, not even. It's not. Not even like. Oh man, you know. Wow, I'd take that home with me. No, it wasn't like that at all. It was. It was horrible. And. And I was like, I remember that more fondly than, oh, mm, talk about collective memory. <laughs> and as far as something that I was like dreading, um, and it turned out to be great, uh, what was it? I, I, I'll tell you, it was a person, actually. It was, uh, cause, and it wasn't me. It was, um, it was Brian Johnson. Last season, we had Burt uh, Ward coming in. Oh, wow, cool. And it was great, but... Brian didn't have te- uh, a lot of, you know, uh, love in his heart for Burr Ward. He's like, oh, God, got another one of these Batman guys coming in that I'll have nothing to say to him. Yeah. And it turns out that he did. And it was, it was, it was great. Yeah. And it was one of our favorite episodes of that season. And it was just a lot of fun. And <laughs> Brian, Brian kind of turned around. Yeah. And I was like, see, see, Brian, stuff happens. And yeah. So. Yeah, because he's more into, um, I mean, Burt Ward now. Um, he's more into, he's very like, much into Ward. pardon? Sorry. Oh, he's very much into Burt Ward now. He's always, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, calls him on the phone late nights. It's, it's kind of. Kind of disturbing, to be honest. <laughs> well, you know, next time he throws a gay joke at you in um, Ming, the, you know, that was what you can uh, throw back at him now. There's there's more than that. <laughs> I mean, the, uh, the Jamie Jam parties that he had with uh, Q, that's that's enough to throw back at him. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've now got visions of Bry just lying on his bed with his feet up in the air 
crossed and he's just twiddling his fingers through his beard while he's talking to him on the phone. Yeah, and Michael <laughs> Sarah, he's had a uh, three-way kind With his crop on. top. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mark, Mark, Mark and Swaler, say hi to our new friend, Burr Ward. <laughs> <laughs> And he's got one of those uh, those three way um, like the Charlie boxes like uh, from Charlie's Angels. Yeah. Hey everybody, <laughs> you're both on speakerphone, <laughs> like literal speakers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic! Um, also talking, oh, you know, I know obviously comic book men, you know, unfortunately is no more, but um, I think that's a big, real big shame. Oh. Thank you. And it's, I mean, that's sincerely as well. And, and typical that the bloody UK gets, um, a program that we've been desperately in need of <laughs> yeah, and, and wanting desperately for, as you know. And, um, yeah. And then the program gets cancelled. So, but here's the thing. You guys might be our saviors. You never know. Yeah. I'm hoping that's the case because I think there's an awful lot of people in the UK that did you know, like, as you know, did want to see the program legally because a lot of us downloaded it illegally, as you know. I know some of us who couldn't get all the episodes. <laughs> yeah. thing that's so happy making to me about people who break the law on my behalf. Yeah. That, and you know what? I, I realize that most of the people are downloading it because, you know, of the dynamic of Bry, Walt, and Cap. And believe me, if it weren't for those three, there would be no anything, really. If it wasn't for those three and their dynamic, there would be no clerks. There would be no chasing Amy. There would be no mall rats. So I mean, that's, I mean, that's true. But you and you and Ming bring a part to the show as well. I and, and I appreciate that. Yeah. I'm not I'm playing anything, but I'm just saying that. Yes, I realize this, but you know, whenever I say something like, "Oh, you downloaded it on my behalf," you know, it's like and illegally too. Yeah. It, it just tickles me that people, you know, that there was that like kind of screw you yeah screw yep. you how, yeah, how dare people. you stand between me and my con favorite content yeah exactly i love that and the fact that you know you were stealing from amc made me happy too when <laughs> when they uh you know canceled that i'm like haha you lost that. <laughs> if, if only they I had a paypal i could send some monies over to <laughs> i would gladly have done it <laughs> i wouldn't have <laughs> There you go, Gemma. But I, I don't want to badmouth AMC because they gave us seven glorious seasons Absolutely. and it was a lot of fun. I mean, I cannot, those guys were, uh, they were amazing. They let us do almost everything we wanted to do. So oh, yeah. well, AMC, thumbs up to you guys. You guys are awesome. Because you did some amazing stuff on there. And sorry, Gemma, if this is a bit of a spoiler and you haven't seen this one, but I think the I've one thing it. that stood out for me was the, when you went out on, was it the bat boat? Oh, yes. <laughs> Yeah. And he never got out to sea. <laughs> oh, yeah. we, we didn't go out to sea. We went out to um parking lot. So mm. that was fun. But um doing that was I had to eat bologna sandwiches for like Ugh. I had to eat like eight bologna sandwiches. I'm like, I hate bologna now. <laughs> and it was like ninety eight degrees. Plus we've got this this tar that's like reflecting the sun back up at us. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm sweating like a pig and we're we're about to be sunburned and uh, <laughs> the things we do for our art. Yeah. That's it. And obviously you got to go in the uh back copter as well, didn't you? That was awesome. Yeah. That was fantastic. Yeah. That I had a great time doing. And uh most people are like, oh my God, I, I would have been so nervous. I'm like, no, not even a little bit. It was like really cool. Being up in a plane, like two hundred and fifty billion tons of thing that shouldn't fly, like a bumblebee. Yeah. That that I that freaks me out. But you know, in a helicopter it's like this is theoretically, you know, I I could probably jump from here and survive, maybe. <laughs> Exactly. Down, this is Michelangelo. It'll be fine. <laughs> They're like years. Exactly. It's more like uh, you know you see it going, and you you know you're running the numbers in your head. You're like, I saw Wiley Coyote do this, and you know he survived. So I, I think I could do it. <laughs> and no, just diving to paddling oh. pools. It's fine. <laughs> Exactly. Sorry, it's the it's the joys of it's the joys of Skype as well. Sorry, because there was a pause. I went to speak, and then I heard that Andy was speaking, so it was like, oh, uh, whoop. <laughs> yeah. And I was actually going to say, you know, before because obviously you work in the secret stash, that is your job, um, as well as um, 
uh, the studio, which I've completely drawn a blank on. A shared universe. A shared universe. Sorry, thank you. And um, yeah, but I was actually curious, like before the TV show started. So then, when they were like breaking the news that they wanted to do the TV program, what was your sort of first initial thoughts about that? Um, exactly this. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, because I was thinking, like, because you're obviously, you know, you're a comic book clerk, and you know, you've got all your setup and everything, but yeah. I was sort of interested. To- it was a little intrusive. And uh, Walt and I both had the same thought. And it's like, how is this going to change our, the dynamic here? How is this going to, you know, how's it going to affect us? How, it's going to be, it's going to be weird. You know, I don't, you know, we were both like worried. You know, here are these people who are like sticking their, their noses where <laughs> they don't belong, you know? Yeah. Like, well, what's going on? So, but, you know, um, legitimately these, um, these strangers became family. These guys who came in and were the crew for almost every one of them came back year after year after year for seven years. And, uh, we became uh, a family. Yeah, which is great, isn't it? And do you still sort of keep in contact as much as you, as much as you can, obviously? Much as we can. They're all over the place, but, uh, I still play poker with, couple of the guys we used to have a, a weekly poker game ah cool so we still do that i still talk to uh to a bunch of the guys yeah um i i would have to say that uh 90 percent of the the crew in contact with if not more 90 95 so it's pretty cool yeah. you know you don't find that very often no and um, which is you know that is really nice because it's like with any sort of workplace and you know consider it is like a workplace in a way you know it's kind of you know, quite often when you leave a job, you, yeah. you don't necessarily keep in contact with the people. You know, there's a there's a handful, but not necessarily all of the people that you used to speak to on a day to day basis. So it's nice, isn't it, when you can get that? Because obviously, I'm noticing. You know, we're going to have to wrap it up shortly. But um, did you want to get into a shared universe and um, discuss that briefly? Or, or in depth, whichever you prefer. <laughs> Let's do that briefly because I do have to spell Walt now, or fairly soon. <laughs> yeah. But um, after, well, I knew that um, Walt and Brian were going to continue with uh, Tell Him Steve Dave, yeah. and then we're going to up their game, that, which they did uh, admirably. Um, you know, they've, they're, they've got the Patreon going on, which you know, I just want to give a shout out to them. Uh, it's amazing what they've done. If you don't listen to tell them Steve, Dave, which they do with Brian Quinn, you really should. It's, it's amazing. And that's still free, but they give bonus content. Yeah. And I've been involved in some of those things. And, uh, Walt is, is in his glory. He is, um, brilliant. That's he, it. he is a genius. So it's, and it's, I mean, I am not blowing smoke up the man's ass cause he's all the way up front, yeah. but he's, uh, he is literally a genius when it comes to this stuff. Um, so we knew that they were going to be doing this and we knew that, uh, comic book men wouldn't last forever. So Ming and I, someone once asked me, what do you want to do if the secret stash closed and comic book men went away? What would you, what would you want to do? And I said, I would love to, you know, open up a podcast studio. Yeah. And brilliant idea. So, um, it took us a year, but we got it going. And, uh, yeah, now it's, it's, it's starting to be self-sustaining and it's, it's pretty cool. It's when we spoke in February, weren't you thinking about uh, franchising? Um, yeah, I'm putting the cart before the horse. I want to make sure that, you know, our house is completely in order before we do that. Makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Just make sure that this is, and it's, it's very much a viable business model that we've got going. And we're, we're actually really proud of it because we've got uh, a couple of uh, podcasters on there who are starting to win awards. So we're like, yeah. Yeah. yeah boy. Well, we were nominated for an award as well. So fingers crossed. We find yeah, out in a, we yeah. find out in a few, uh, well, a few weeks or so. So fingers, very cool. Yeah. Fingers crossed if, uh, yeah, it was the people's choice awards. So nice. yeah. So fingers crossed. If anyone decides to come over to the side of the, uh, the pond, as you say, um, come on down and, and podcast that, uh, shared universe because Andy did. Yeah, he yeah, did. I heartily recommend it. Oh. I really do. Thank you so much. It's, it's a nerd paradise. Yeah, Mike, I can't tell you how much, how jealous I was of him actually, you know, doing that, having that experience to, yeah. you know, like I hope that, you know, maybe the three of us at one point can come across and do like a recording of talking cards wallop because. Fantastic. 
Yeah, so you know, like next time, <laughs> maybe when it's cheaper flights to get over, we'll uh, we'll do it at some point. I'm gonna hold you to that. Yeah, well, it will happen. So, did I read somewhere that uh, you guys have started to do some community lessons or sort of reaching out to local schools and colleges to sort of yeah, do what they want? Sure. We are. We're um, we are teaching at Brookdale Community College, which is our local uh, community college. Um, we've also been. Uh, teaching at the Voyager School, and Ming has uh, reached out to the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. So we're, you know, helping, you know, and keep kids off drugs and get them in front of uh, microphones. Yeah, brilliant. So we're pretty it's happy about that. It's a great outreach program because it gives um, people the voice, doesn't it? You know, to say what they want. You know, what's that great um, movie with um, Christian Slater? Pump up the volume. 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 <laughs> That's how far my yeah, cultural yeah, references yeah. go back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, man, what are you going to do, Andy? That's it. Fake, fake actor and culture and uh, plot line. Guess the movie title. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Taylor settling in well because uh, he's, he's now joined the, the gang, isn't he? He did. He is, uh, Taylor's awesome. Taylor's mm-hmm. fantastic. Taylor's taught a couple of classes with me. We we uh, were up at um, he was with me at Brookdale Community College like uh, less than a month ago. So he's he's a natural at it. So yeah, and he's a great guy as well. I echo what Andy said. So I mean, I, I've never met the guy personally, but having spoke to him on this show and listened to him in his own podcast, you know, he's a good ex. So yeah. <clears throat> I had a great time in Ashby Park. It was and, and Red Bank. It was fantastic. Yeah. So, so when, when you guys do come over and yeah. podcast with us, you get to meet him. That's fantastic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that we can sort of wrap this up for you. Where can people find out information about a shared universe and like the courses and things like that? You can go on uh, our website, a shared universe dot com. Uh, ASU. I think we're at at ASU on um, Twitter and uh, just Google a shared. Universe. I mean, hey, Google. Google was good enough for my grandfather. <laughs> my grandfather Googled a lot. You know, he was a porn. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know what the hell Google was. <laughs> uh, he was an ignorant Slav from uh, Steelton, Pennsylvania. <laughs> but just Google a shared universe um, or come visit us. You know, like I said, take one of the, them uh, fancy transatlantic flights, which are like $50 round trip now, right? I wish. Beautiful. Well, that's how much it costs you. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah the exchange rate at the moment yeah. gotcha so uh yeah just google us and uh if you have any questions just ask yeah Ming and i we answer yeah we answer all the the emails so sometimes it takes us a while because yeah. Ming's always out in like toronto or botswana land or wherever it really is so <laughs> and also because obviously it's so popular as well you get inundated with so many emails so it's hard to get back to people isn't it of course well thanks so, so much for having me on you guys you're absolutely welcome thank you very much mike and we'll let you get back to work unless of course you know i'm going to be cheeky unless of course walt fancy is just making a quick appearance because you know then we've had all of the comic book men on this show he was right back here and then he ran he heard you ask that question he ran up to the front yeah. no, actually um he is taking care of a customer right now but we can wait <laughs> oh yeah no i'm Everything. i'm completely he's taken. helping santa claus out now so no okay. i don't think you can uh. Cheers, bye. Yeah, yeah, thank you ever so much for your time and uh, get back to work. <laughs> Take care. Have you gone? Bye. He's gone. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, gone. Yeah. <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye, now I'm gone. <laughs> okay. Cheers, bye.
the tongue and 